Hi there, sir. My name's Andrew. I'm a final year medical student. Could I just confirm your name and age, please? Uh, it's Peter, and I'm 23. Nice to meet you, Peter. Today I've been asked to examine your cranial nerves. This will just involve me examining your eyes, your facial movements, and your hearing. Would that be okay? Yeah, that sounds fine. I'm just going to start by asking you a question. Okay. Have you noticed any change in your sense of smell at all? Nope. I think it's not. Thank you. Now I'm going to examine your vision. Would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. Do you wear glasses or contact lenses? Uh, no, I don't. Fine. What I'd like you to do is look at the Snellen chart, which is the chart on the wall. Okay. Could you cover your left eye with the palm of your left hand? And using your right eye, could you read the smallest line of letters possible? Uh, P N T U H X. Fantastic. And could you do the same with the other eye? And again, P N T U H X. That's brilliant. Peter is displaying a visual acuity of 6 9. I'm now going to test your visual fields. Okay. Could you cover your right eye with your right palm? Yeah. And I'm going to cover the opposite eye. Now keep looking at me with your open eye and tell me when you see my finger moving. Yeah. 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 And the same with the other eye. no gross visual field defects. Now looking at me, can you point at the finger you see moving? Thank you. I'm now going to assess your pupil's response to light. Okay. Could you just focus on the chart on the wall behind me? There's a normal direct. There's a normal consensual response in the left eye. response in the right eye. And now we swim the light between the eyes. There is no obvious afferent pupil defect. Now I can ask you to look at the chart on the wall, again behind me. And when I say, can you look at the pen torch? Now, there is normal convergence and constriction of the pupil. I'm now going to assess the movements of your eyes. Okay. First of all, are you experiencing any double vision at all? No. Nope. Do let me know if you experience any double vision throughout this examination. Firstly, on inspection, I can see that Peter has no obvious manifest squint, and there is no ptosis of either eye. Can you focus on the pen torch? And keeping your head still, could you follow the torch? Observing for any nystagmus. That's fine, thank you. To complete the examination of the eye, I would formally assess for a squint using the cover, uncover, and alternating cover tests. I would also do fundoscopy. Could you clench your teeth for me? Yeah. That's fantastic. And could you open your mouth for me? And don't let me close it. And could you close your mouth? And don't let me open it. Could you move your jaw to one side? And don't let me move it back. And to the other side. That's fine. There's normal bulk and power of the temporalis and masseter. I'm now going to test the sensation on your face. I'm going to start by using this piece of cotton wool. What I'd like you to do is close your eyes. And let me know when you feel the cotton wool. And if it's the same on both sides. Okay. Yep. 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 That's fine. And I'm going to do the same with this sharp disposable pin. Okay. It's 
close your eyes again for me. There's normal sensation on the face. Moving on, I've just got a few more questions. Okay. Have you noticed any change in your hearing at all? No. Nope. Uh, noises being louder than usual? No, nope. no loud noises. That's fine. And how about your taste? Have you noticed any changes there? No, taste has been fine. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to do a few facial expressions. Would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. First of all, could you screw up your eyes? And don't let me open them. Can you puff out your cheeks? Don't let me push them in. Can you purse your lips? Bare your teeth? And smile. Thank you. I'm now going to assess your hearing. Okay. First of all, I'm going to stand behind you and whisper a number into one of your ears. I just want you to repeat the number that you hear. Okay. Seventy-nine. I'm now going to use the tuning fork to assess your hearing. Okay. I'm going to place it on the bone behind your ear. I want you to let me know whether you can hear it and when you stop hearing it. Okay. You can hear that. And it stopped. Can you hear it now? I can still hear that now. You can hear that. It's stopped. You can hear that. I'm now going to place the tuning fork in the centre of your forehead. Okay. I want you to know, let me know whether you can hear the noise and where you hear it. Okay. I can hear that and it's on both sides. That's brilliant. Air conduction is better than bone conduction in both ears and there is no lateralisation of the sound when the tuning fork is placed in the centre of the forehead. This is normal. I'm now going to assess some movements of your neck and shoulders. Okay. On inspection, there's no obvious wasting of the sternocleidomastoids. On inspection from behind, there's no obvious wasting of the trapezii. Could you shrug your shoulders for me? And don't let me push them down. That's brilliant. Can you turn your head to the right? And don't let me move it back. And move your head to the left. And don't let me move it back. There's normal power of the sternocleidomastoids and trapezia. On speaking to Pete, there was no obvious dysphonia. Could you open your mouth for me? Yeah. And say ah. Ah. Thank you. There is no obvious deviation of the uvula or soft palate. Could you stick your tongue out for me? There's no obvious wasting or deviation. Could you move it from side to side? Brilliant. And could you move it into the side of your cheek? Then don't let me push it. And the same on the other side. There's no more power. Thank you very much. Thank you. On examination of cranial nerves 1 to 12, there are no obvious abnormalities. This is a normal cranial nerve examination. 